Hey everybody, today I want to talk to you about screen tones and this is just an introduction um, but I'm going to do actual tutorials on screen toning later on. It's just like I said, this is an introduction and there are some things that you need to know before you start. So anyway, everything stated is in my opinion and I'm not trying to say I'm an expert. It's just that some people have asked me to do this and t because they wanted to learn how to tone. Um, I'm also not trying to say that you have to tone exactly like me. It's just that I'm just showing you techniques that you can refine on your own so that you can merge it with your style. And as with any medium, it does take practice and time and patience, of course. And uh, as for experience, I've worked with tones for over 10 years. What exactly are screen tones? Screen toning is basically Okay, well, according to Wikipedia, screen toning is a technique for applying textures and shades to drawings which are used as an alternative to um, hatching or stippling. Basically, what that means is it's shading with dots to create different textures or shades, all while being in black and white. Screen tone sheets usually consist of flexible, transparent adhesive film with dots printed on them on them sorry <laughs> certain brands have permanent adhesive like chart pack while others have a light adhesive and can be repositioned repositioned just don't do it too often because the glue will wear off and when you try to reposition it it's going to fall off <laughs> so the brands that i know that make screen tones are chart pack and chart pack are actually the first brand I ever used and like I said they're the ones with the really 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 permanent glue so if you uh, try to take off a, a chart pack tone it'll rip your paper <laughs> another one would be deleter or deleter junior I'm just gonna say deleter but um, basically deleter deleter screen is the bigger sheet and deleter junior is like what like it says it's a smaller sheet. I think it's actually half size of the the regular big sheet. But um, Deleter, they I think they're the most popular um, screen tone brand, mostly because I think they make they make a lot of manga art supplies. But anyway, we're talking about tones. They also made a screen tone software which is called Comic Works, and I actually have it as you see in that picture, and it came out. I think five years before Manga Studio came out, and I mean the Ameri uh, the English version where they translated it in English, or should I say English? But actually, they did a really good job at translating it. If you wanted to know, I like Comic Works way more better than Manga Studio. Just so you know, I see Ink and I see Screen. I actually don't know if they're the same brand or not. I'm just going to group them together. So yeah, <laughs> two. I actually found the two brand on a comic I mean a Copic marker website but that was a long time ago I don't think they have any more you me I uh, I actually never heard of this brand before until my friend from Japan sent these to me so yeah there's also um, Maxon and Letraset I've I don't I've never used them before, but I've seen pictures and heard of them before, so I know they exist. Those are all the brands that I know of and or have used or whatever. So there are different types of tones. The most common ones are, of course, the dots, which are mostly used for shading or decorative purposes. The lines, which are mostly used for, um, what's it called, speed lines or decorations. Well, these tones, you can just use them any way you want. I can't really tell you what the gradients do. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you just use it for whatever. Uh, I usually use sand tones for um, toning pants to make them like jeans or um, to darken some skin tone. <clears throat> and, of course, there are the many, many patterns, which consist of decorations, um, effects, and, of course, backgrounds. Um, the background tones that you see here, my friend from China sent to me, these are actually, they're, they are screen tones, but they're not adhesive, so, um, and I don't know the brand of them, but she sent me a lot. Just so you know, the basics of a tone, if you look on regular dot tones, you'll see 
a line count and a density percentage. Uh, the line count, which will be the number right next to the L, and the density percent, which would be the number <laughs> next to the percent, of course. So basically what a line count is, it's the number of lines per inch, and the density percent percentage is the total percentage of black area grouped together. For example, 0% would be white and 100% would be completely black. So here are some examples of what different density percentage would look like with the same line count. So um, as you can see here, the lightest, okay, they're all, um, the line count would all be 27.5 uh, and um, the percentage is low, lowest to highest. Sorry, my brain is not working. So as you can see, the the higher the um, density percentage is, the darker it gets. And the number on top is just the screen tone number, so don't worry about that. And uh, I actually, <laughs> in order to show these, I had to use my comic works because I tried taking pictures of different tones with different percentages but it didn't show up so I had to enlarge my tone on um, comic works and yeah hopefully you can see that angles so usually when you tone something it'll be in the 45 degree angle change the angles it'll create a different pattern it'll create a different effect so you should try um, different angles when you tone if you layer different density tones, basically different tones with a different line count on top of each other. It'll create a moray pattern. I, I think that's how you say that. I can't pronounce it. But yeah, this is what example of those patterns are. And usually it's a big no-no. <laughs> so don't do it. Unless you're doing it on purpose, then, you know, that's different. <laughs> there are four major ways. One is layering. One is scraping with a knife, one is erasing, and the last is adding white. And I will go into detail with these in my future videos because, like I said, this video is just an introduction. So supplies, I'm going to mention, I want to talk about uh, supplies for traditional um, tones. First, you need an inked drawing because if you have a pencil drawing, the pencil is actually going to pick up in your scan or your copy. So an ink drawing, a clean ink drawing is always the best. You'll also need a photo blue pencil, a sand eraser or an ink eraser, an X-Acto knife or a utility knife. I actually use two knives. I use an X-Acto knife and a utility knife. It's just easier that way. Um, some clear tape, some tissue, a tone hera, or if you don't want to get a tone hera, you can use the back of a metal spoon. And the tone hera and the spoon are used to um, lay down the tone and so that it will stick more. And some uh, optional tools would be a ruler and thumbtacks or pins or whatever they would be called. And uh, as for digital artists, you'll need um, your inked drawing or a drawing, a tablet. It's easier to use a tablet than to use a mouse unless you're an expert with the mouse. <laughs> um, and of course your toning software. And where to purchase your tones. Um, I'm going to post them right here. As for digital software, the only digital software I know of would be Manga Studio, Deleter, Comic Works, and Photoshop. If you have any questions, just um, just you can just ask me, leave a comment or message me or whatever, and I'll try to answer as best as I can. Uh, okay, so thank you for watching and hey, okay, bye.